In this video, we're going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to set a stack size limit so that when we add items to our inventory and it reaches its limit, it'll throw it in the new slot. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? Welcome to part 5 of my complete inventory series. If you've reached this step, it's because you've watched the rest of the series in order. If this isn't the case, simply click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable. Not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which, by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. Adding an item limit to each stack size is, is relatively easy to do at this point because we've already set up a good foundation. For example, as we were setting up our game objects here, let's click on the greater health potion that I have set up here, we set an item cap for that individual object. Um, my berries, on the other hand, I changed the item cap to two, and you can change this at any point that you like, but once you have it set and you build your game, that's pretty much what it's going to be. This, by the way, is how you would set things like armor up that you don't want to stack or, or tools or weapons. Uh, you just set that item cap to one. Well, in order to set up our item cap specifically um, on each item for it to work and reflect well in the slot, um, we are actually going to go to our item game object and we're going to add this super unit right here called item cap at the end of the train. So this is the very last thing it's going to do. It's going to check to see if that item is capped. And so for the item cap macro, this is what you're going to need to go ahead and build. Uh, basically, when the item has already been added to the list in the previous super unit, it's going to come into here and it's going to check to see if the slot list, which is the list of variables that we have on this individual slots, item this game object here the item it's going to check to see if that slot list it's going to count the items and it's going to see if the item cap on that individual game object so it's the first let's say the first berry in the list it's always going to check the first item because they're always the same uh, for the same unit it's going to see if this, this the, the amount of items on the slot list is less than the item cap itself if it comes off as true, meaning that it hasn't reached the item cap, what it's going to do is it's going to set the cap variable on the parent object to false. So the parent object is item slot, and right here you see that we've added in that cap variable. Uh, There's a boolean, and we're leaving it off at the moment because we want to add items before, um, before it actually uh, sets that true or false. So let's say it comes in, and we have reached the item cap. And what it's going to do is it's going to set that variable to true. Now there is actually one more thing that we need to do that probably should have been set up previously, but uh, we didn't need it at the time, but now we will. In the super unit add items, you likely have this macro right here. Uh, that's the only difference that you have here. So we're just going to run the flow out of this disable number, uh, the set enable pro UG UI, and we're going to set it into the output right here so that no matter whether this is true or false, we're always going to get a check to check our uh, cap size on, on that individual item. So that item cap uh, super unit is what you absolutely need. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're just going to have to make changes in two more places. On our inventory game object, what we're going to do is we're going to have to make one little change to the add to item and one more little change to the add to inventory. So let's start with this one right here first. So as we look at this super unit, the only thing that we're adding here is this item capped uh, variable. So it's checking the child of the first thing in the list, so the, the, uh, the child of itself, it's checking to see if that item is capped. If, it's, if it is capped, it's not going to do anything with that game object. It's simply going to go to the next slot. And if it, uh, if it isn't capped, then it's just going to continue with what we already had it doing. So you need to put these two units right here in the flow that the item has not already been added. It's coming up here to capped. Again, make sure that you have that line going in the right place or else this is not going to work. The last change that we need to make is the exact same change, but we need to put it in the right place to add to item. Now, I try to spread this out 
and try to get it all on the screen. So this might look a little spaghetti to you, but the reason why is simply because I want to show you where every line is going. You can certainly rearrange these however you like, but these two units right here are what you need to add. The first thing it's going to check as it comes through is, is that slot's item list capped? And if it's not, then it's going to go, well, is there something in that slot? Um, and if it is, well, then we're going to go up and do the rest of these things. So you just need to add that capped variable right there. And now you actually should already be set up and be good to go. So, so for example, I got my berries here. And I know I have an item cap on my berries of two. And again, you can set this to whatever you want. I know I think I have my key set to one. So my item cap on the key is one. Throw another one of those in there. The mushroom. Uh, I have 10 of those, so I'm just going to go in there and just uh, duplicate this game object several times. And we'll get an idea that whenever we press play and start our game up, that we should see the item caps reflecting uh, that when it reaches the amount of items. So it should not add any more to this slot. It should now add it to the next slot. Let's throw a key in there just to be safe. And there you go. So it actually works exactly the way it's supposed to and now you have a stack size. Okay, you should now know how to set up a stack limit size, and hopefully this is what you're looking for, but really, what good is an inventory system where you can't pick up, rearrange, and even swap items? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in the next tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you. If not, hang in there because we have so much more to cover. For now, just let me say thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.